All right, hello everyone, Miss C here, and today we'll be adding and subtracting decimals. So our objective is I can fluently add and subtract multi-digit decimals. So the materials I'll need, again, will be the same always, pencil, paper, and eraser. And again, if you don't have those materials, that's okay. Anything to write with and write on or an electronic device all works out well as long as you guys are participating. So again, I will give you guys time to go get those materials if they aren't in front of you. Um, and in the meantime, we will do the riddle. So today's riddle is if there are four oranges and you take away three, how many oranges do you have left? So I'll give you a few minutes and then when we come back, we'll go over that answer. All right, so coming back together um, for the answer. So it says there are four oranges. Um, let me get an orange really quickly. So there are four oranges. One, two, three, four. And you take away three. So I'm gonna put a three in a little grocery bag here. So it asks, how many oranges do you have? So a lot of people may have guessed one just because one was left, but the answer is three. So there are four oranges, you take away three, which means you have three oranges. So let's start thinking. So again, our um, lesson today is gonna to be adding and subtracting decimals. So to get us thinking, sometimes when fractions are too large, um, how can we still add and subtract them without having to find the common denominator? So sometimes your um, question may be something like this. Five and eleven, a hundred and over eleven and a hundred and five plus six and five over one hundred twenty-two. So it'd be super difficult for us to find um, that common denominator. So I'll give you guys a few minutes to think about what you can do instead um, that you don't have to find that common denominator. All right, so what we would do in this instance is we would turn that fraction into a decimal. So it would be easier for us to add the decimals together instead of finding the common denominator um, for both of those fractions. So we would just um, divide the number and then turn that into a decimal. So that's how we will start thinking for today. Um, moving forward, um, this is how we find the decimals. So we are going to change three and four tenths into a decimal. So I have it shown here for you guys, um, but we will work through the problem together. So we're going to turn three and four tenths into a decimal. So let's see, we know the whole number is three. So I'm going to write three because we know that three is going to be our whole number. So that would come before the decimal. So since that is the whole number that comes before the decimal, so I wrote the three and then the decimal. So next we would divide four by 10 to give us the decimal answer. And when we find that, that goes after the decimal. So I'm gonna use my calculator and I'm gonna divide four by 10 and I get 0.4 as my decimal. So then that will come after. So it looks a little bit something like this. So this one is um, super short and super easy. Just wanted you guys to um, figure out how to change it from a fraction into a decimal for us to keep going. So again, reminder, um, we just divide the fraction and turn that part into the decimal. Anything before the fraction will be the whole number that comes before the decimal. 
So let's start by adding decimals. So we are going to add 25.78 um, and um, 74.51. So first, um, we need to line up the decimals correctly. So it's definitely important that when we do adding and subtracting and multiplying anything with decimals, we always put it in the right spot. We don't want it to be over one um, because then that would change our entire answer and where it would be. So I have it um, electronically for you, but I'm going to also write it out um, just so that you guys can see it. So I have 25.78 plus, and then I have the 74.51. So I'm going to put my decimal first, so it's lined up. And then I have the 74 that came before my decimal, and then the 51 that came after my decimal. So I want to make sure that all my numbers are lined up correctly, my decimals are also lined up correctly, and then my whole numbers that come after. So after we set up the equation, we are going to add down normally. So um, we're going to do that. And then we always start from right to left in case you need to um, carry over extra numbers that you have um, to add to the next side. And then um, make sure you bring down your decimal in the same spot so that your um, number doesn't change. So I have it again, the answer electronically for you, but we're going to do this together. So I'm just like the photo, I'm going to use a different color for the carry um, portion. Um, I'm also gonna use a different color for the decimal just so we remember where it goes. So I'm gonna add, first add um, my eight and my one. So when we add those together, I get um, nine. And then um, seven plus five. So I know seven plus five gives me 12. So I can't put 12 there on its own. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to put the two and then I'm gonna have to carry the one to the other side. So if you guys could see what I did here, I put the two and then I carried over the one to the next side. So since I have those two already, I'm going to make sure I bring down my decimal in the same spot that I had it. So again, my number does not change. So I'm going to add one plus five plus four since I had to carry that over. So then one plus five gives me six. And then six plus four gives me 10. So again, I can't put the two numbers there. So I'm gonna put the zero and then carry the one. Just like that. And then we'll do the same thing. Um, we're gonna do one plus two and then two plus seven. So one plus two gives me three, two plus seven gives me 10. So again, um, I can't write that, so I'm going to have to carry. And then I have the one here. And since there's no more numbers, I can just carry that down. And that gives me 100.29. So hopefully, you guys got something around the same um, with uh, your answer. Um, and for um, moving forward, I'm going to have you guys do it on your own. So on the next slide here, to try it on your own, I did have um, the steps written out for you here. So first, you're going to line up the decimal, and then I do have um, the words on the side for you guys on what you do after you line up the decimal. So if you guys ever have forgotten, that's okay. Um, that was a little bit of a uh, lot to learn in that little time frame so i have that for you and then i will give you some time on your own to figure that out so we are going to for on your try it on your own we're going to add 34.45 and um 87.93 so after a few minutes um I will come back and work through the answer with you guys um, for you to see.
All right, now that we're back together, um, we are going to go over this answer. So I'm gonna go to the next slide and show you um, what I did here. Um, so again, let's read the question. We are going to add um, 34.45 and 87.93. So our first step again is we need to line up the decimals correctly. So um, if you guys don't have a little grid chart like this, that is okay. Um, I wrote mine out by hand, but I made sure that everything lined up perfectly so that there would be no issues with my decimal. So um, after we do that, we set that up. Um, again, after we set up the equation, we are going to add down normally. Um, always start from right to left in case you have to carry over and then make sure you bring down your decimal in the exact same spot you lined it up. So I'm going to start with adding um, five and three. When I add five to three, that gives me eight. So since eight is a single digit number, I don't have to carry that over so that I can just write that answer and bring it down. Oh, oh no, sorry. There we go. So in my next column, I have four plus nine, and I know four plus nine gives me 13, but I cannot write 13, so I'm gonna have to carry that over. So I'm gonna bring the three down, carry over the one on top of the four on the other side, and then I'm gonna remember to bring down my decimal just like that. Okay, and then now I'm going to add the one plus the four plus the seven. So one plus four gives me five, and then five plus seven gives me 12. So then again, since it's not a single digit number, I am going to write the two, and then I'm gonna carry over the one, just like that. All right, so after I do that, I'm going to add down again. So one plus three gives me four, and then four plus eight gives me 12 as well. So again, since 12 is not a single digit number, we're gonna bring down the two and then carry over the one. Just like that. And like the last um, example we did, since the one, um, there was nothing else to add it to, I basically just bring that down and that gives me 112.38. So in the instance of adding and subtracting decimals or um, doing any operations with decimals, we have to make sure we line up our decimal correctly because if not, it could give us a drastic difference of an answer. So it could be like 100 more, 100 less, or anywhere in between. So that could give us a real big difference in our answer. So make sure that would be the number one thing for us to do is to line up our decimals correctly. So now let's get into subtracting the decimals. So we are going to subtract um, 89.79 by 33.81. So first, we need to line up the decimals correctly. So just like adding, we need to make sure we have our decimals lined up. So I have that shown for you here. And I also handwritten it for you if you guys didn't have a grid chart like that. And if you wanted to, you could definitely make your own grid chart as well. So I will run again here and go like this. and write it as um, 89.79.79, subtract 
33.81. So if you guys had trouble with determining where to put your numbers on the um, paper without a chart, you could make your own chart like I have right here. So I'll do both for you guys so you can see. I'm gonna draw a line right here. So I will do both sides so that you guys can see what to do. So after we set up the equation, we are going to subtract down normally. So just like adding, we are going to subtract down normally. We always start from right to left in case you need to borrow from the next number. So when we add, we had to carry over that 10, could be 20 or whatever. So we had to carry that over, but now we are going to borrow 10 from our previous number. And then make sure you bring down your decimal in the same spot that you lined it up. So I have that written down. And now let's subtract normally. So uh, nine minus one gives me eight. So I know that eight will go in this. I will actually draw it down like this for you guys to see better as well. So I brought down my eight. So my nine, my nine subtracted by one gives me eight. And I did it over here again in the chart as well. So then now I have seven minus eight. So I can't subtract seven minus eight. So we are going to have to borrow from the number before and we're gonna borrow 10. So my seven turns into 17. And since we borrowed 10, my nine turns into eight. So just like this. because then now I can subtract 17 by eight. So when I subtract 17 by eight, that gives me nine. And then again, we're gonna bring down the decimal. So it's always in the right spot. Decimal and decimal. So before my whole number, I have 0.98. So before my, I mean, after my decimal, I have 0.98 written out for you guys. So then now, since I had to borrow that 10, I have 8 minus 3 instead of 9 minus 3. So if you guys don't understand what I'm saying, um, before I show you, um, again, it's on the chart for you with the work shown. So when I do 8 minus 3, that gives me 5 because we had to turn the nine into an eight because we had to borrow that 10. And then our last row, I have eight minus three, which is again, five. So my final answer is 55.98. So um, that is how we do subtraction for um, decimals. And again, on the next Try It On Your Own page, I do have the instructions here for you guys in case you have, may have forgotten um, the steps. So um, for your Try It On Your Own, you are going to subtract 92.59 and 81, oh, sorry, 21.86. So I will go back to the left slide just for a moment to see how they set it up and I want you to set it up similar to this that's why I have those blank um, those blank boxes on the next page because that's where your work goes and that's where my work will go when I show you the answer so I'll give you guys a few moments to do this on your own and then we will come back together and review the answer All right, so we are going to go over that answer together. I have it written down like this. I won't do the chart version this time for you guys because eventually we're gonna move away from doing it with the chart to help us line it up. And then we will go into being able to write it on our own and knowing where to line up the decimal. So I have 92.59 um, subtracted by 21.86. 
So my instructions again say that we will set up the equation and we're going to subtract down normally. We will always start on the right in case we need to borrow for subtraction. So I have that here for you guys set up in the chart version um, and then I'm going to do the handwritten version, handwritten version part. So I have my nine minus six, which gives me three and then five minus eight. But then again, I can't subtract five by eight. So I'm going to have to borrow from the digit four and um, turn that into 15. And when I do that, my two becomes one because we borrowed that 10. I have that shown here. And that's always how we're going to do it when we subtract. All right, so 15 minus eight gives me seven. And then my next step is gonna be bringing my decimal down because that's the next line I see. After I do that, move, moving on to the left, I have one minus one, which gives me the answer of zero. And then two minus seven, which gives, I mean, two, ah, nine minus two, which gives me the answer of seven. So my answer is 70.73. So with that, you guys should have gotten the answer. That's exactly the same and the decimal should be in the same spot as well. So if it's not lined up correctly, you could have got 7.073 or 707.3. But in this instance, when you line up correctly, you get 70.73. So moving forward, let's do a challenge. So try to convert these fractions to decimal, then add up, subtract them. So I have four and three tenths um, plus five and 12 a hundredths. And then I also have 11 and six tenths subtracted by six and 11 a hundredths. So I'm gonna give you guys moments to go over that. First, I want you to find the conversion from the fraction to the decimal. And then after we get the answer for that, we will go from the decimal to adding and subtracting. All right, so here are the conversions. So my four, I'm gonna write those out and then we're gonna use them later. So my conversion of four and three tenths gives me 4.3. My conversion of five and 12 hundredths gives me 5.12. My conversion for 11 and six tenths gives me 11.6. And then my last six and 11 hundredths gives me 6.11. So again, a review. Um, when we find the decimal of this, we are going to have that whole number that comes before the decimal, which in this instance was four, five, 11, and six. And then when we divide the fraction, so three divided by 10 gave me 0.3, 12 divided by 10 gave me 0.12, um, six divided by 10 gave me 0.6, and 11 divided by 10 gave me 0.11. So these ones were a little bit easier because they were all divisible by like 10 or 100. So that gave us a very solid number that we could have probably figured out on our own. Um, but moving forward, they could be more difficult and you could have them be um, numbers that aren't as divisible and it could be a little bit more difficult for us to find the decimal of that. So we have to um, make sure we divide correctly and um, we will find the answer for that. So when we do those, we are going to carry now. So I have my um, 4.3 plus 5.12. So when I write this out by hand and set this up, I have this empty space here. So we are going to fill in the empty space with a zero. So 
when we div when we add um, zero plus two, that gives me two. And then when we add um, three plus one, that gives me four. And then don't forget, we are always going to, sorry, we are always going to bring down that decimal and that gives me um, 0.42. And then now we're gonna add that last um, section and that gives me um, four plus five gives me nine. So my answer for that gives me 9.42. And then now we're gonna move into the subtraction problem. So looks here, there's gonna be a lot of carrying. So I am going to, I mean, a lot of borrowing. So I'm gonna use a different sheet of paper just to allow myself a lot of room. So I have my 11.60 subtracted by my 6.11. So with that, um, again, see now I have an empty space here, and I'm going to fill that in with a zero. So I can't do zero subtracted by one, so I'm going to have to borrow. So I'm going to make that into a 10. And then when I borrowed from the number before, I'm going to turn the six into the five since I took away 10. So I have that set up here like this. And then my 10 minus 1 now gives me 9. And then my 5 minus 1 gives me 4. So that's perfect. And then now the next um, column is going to be moving down the decimal so that it never changes. Um, make sure we always do the decimal in um, the from right to left as we add or subtract so we don't ever forget about it. So I always think of the decimal as its own section. So when I'm moving from my right to left, I'm gonna see that after that number, I see the decimal, I'm gonna bring that down so it never changes. So now I have one minus six, and again, we see we can't do that. So I'm going to turn that into 11 and borrow um, from the number four and borrow 10. So then my one actually turns into zero. So it looks a little something like this. If this looks confusing, um, it's shown a little bit more clear on the slide. And then now when we subtract, 11 minus six gives me five, and then zero minus zero gives me zero. So you could just leave the zero out if you wanted to, um, or you could write it in like we have here and like I have here as well so that we get um, 5.49. So those ones are more challenging because the ones that we did in an example and the ones I had you guys do when you tried it on your own, I gave you the decimal already. So with this challenge, we um, added using the fraction and changing that into the decimal for us to get the answer. So moving on, again, um, our objective was I can add and subtract uh, multi-digit decimals. So that's exactly what we did for the lesson today. And again, if you wanted more practice, um, you can go to Khan Academy videos or you can go to Brain Pop videos. Um, I really like both of them. Those ones are my favorite. And um, the Khan Academy, Khan Academy, one, Academy ones are videos of like teachers showing you what to do and the Brain Pop ones are a little bit more animated. So whichever one that you feel um, would help you learn and connect better with, um, that would be perfect. So thank you.